Let's just pray and jump right into this. Father, we thank you that your word changes us. Thank you that when your word falls into our hearts and our hearts are ready to receive it, we are changed and we are transformed into looking like you, Jesus. So today, we open our hearts. Come on, make it real for yourself. I open my heart to you. I thank you, Jesus. You're the living word. Pray that you would make the word come alive in me today. Set me free from myself and my own way of thinking and my own ways so that I can serve you, Lord. I thank you that your truth sets me free. So I receive with an open mind and an open heart what it is that you want to say to me today in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, if that's what you believe and that's what you want, say amen. amen. GPS number four, our final, our final message in this series we've been doing um, for the past month, a series about the will of God, right? All about the will of God. How can I learn the will of God? How can I know the will of God? How can I do the will of God? And we've been memorizing all together as a church um, two verses from, from Romans. And we've been doing this every Sunday. We've been doing it in our e-groups. And I've been encouraging you guys to do it on our own. And today we're going to read it one more time together. And if you've already memorized it, don't look at the screen. If you still need a little help, take a look at the screen ready it's Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 together Woo! we might need to invest in a new light bulb in our projector it's a little faint there all right ready and so dear brothers and sisters I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Why A series about God's will. And again, just one more time, I'm not talking about the sovereign will of God, you know, things that we don't really have anything to do with, like the fact that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back no matter what you and I do. He's because he's Jesus, because he's the Lord, right? But we're talking about uh, specifically God's plan, God's will, God's design, God's purpose for our lives. And I began, when I began this series, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me it's a crucial time for you to talk about this. It's a crucial time for the church. And you guys, over the past month, I think we've seen why it's such a crucial time in our nation for the church to really truly discover who we are and to be who God made us to be, right? For us to discover his calling on us, for us to discover his design for the church, our purpose, and for us to learn how to know that will and develop the skills so that we can fulfill it. Yes? We've got to know his will if we're going to do it. The main point of the series, again, I want to invite you, if you have your, your bulletin on the back, there's a little outline for you. And I've said this over and over. This is a statement. God loves you and created you with a specific design, purpose, and assignment called his will. And God's will for you is good, pleasing, and perfect. He wants you to discover it and learn how to know it so you can live it. This is what we have learned week after week from Romans chapter 12. The will of God isn't just something that all of a sudden, boom, a light bulb goes off and you know it all, right? Then you run after it. No, it's something that you learn to know. Romans 12 says it. I learn to know it, okay, as I'm allowing God to transform me into a different person, By changing the way I think. The more I change the way I think and and start thinking like him, the more I will learn to know the will of God. And the more I learn to know his will, I'll be able to do it. uh, We've called this series GPS, right? Because uh, GPS stands for, you guys, Global Positioning System. But for us, it's God's Positioning System. That's right. And uh, one thing that we've talked about every week is that in order for your GPS, most of us have one on our phone or in our car, you know, 
Um, if you've never used the GPS, just bear with us, but I'm sure you've at least heard of one and know how it works, right? <laughs> I have friends that are like, I don't like that GPS thing. Well, I'm very glad for it. <laughs> I'm very thankful for it. It's get, gotten me out of um, some messes before, right? Um, and, and GPS gives you step-by-step instructions to get from here to there. But what's the first thing you've got to know before the GPS can serve any purpose for you? Where are you going, right? You need to know your destination. What is your desired destination? And we learned the first week that we have, if we're going to do his will, we've got to be able to see, see his will. And if we're going to see his will, there's one thing we've got to see more than anything else. We've got to see Jesus, right? What is above all else, more than anything else, God's will for you? To look like Jesus, right? Everything else, no matter who you are, what your individual calling, purpose, design is on your life, the end result is for you and I to look like Jesus. So we've got to see Jesus, and he is our final destination, right? Then we learn two weeks in a row about if we're going to do the will of God, we also need to hear. First, we need to hear his word in the right way, right? We talked about, uh, the, Jesus talked about the, way, the different ways people hear the word and that we need to hear the word in a way that we believe it and cling to it, right? Cling to the word. And then last uh, Sunday, we learned uh, the 10 P's keys. Somebody shout out some of the 10 P's keys. The 10 P's keys were 10, 10 ways. Everybody remembers the Spanish one, right? 10 ways we hear God's voice and know his will. I heard palabra, which means the word, right? Purpose, passion, it's plain, peace, prophecy, people, plural. All right. I think you covered all the P's, okay? Well, today, today, um, we're going to learn how our awesome, amazing, loving God, who's so wise, Um, has the ability to reroute us when we get off the course of his will. What happens if you're using your GPS and it's taking you from point A to point B and then for some reason you either didn't hear it, weren't paying attention, didn't like the instruction it gave you, (laughs) and you missed a turn? What happens? It automatically goes (laughs) rerouting. It says it up at the top, right? Why? Because in the end, it's going to get you there. Right? The most wonderful news today is that God is bigger than our missteps. God is bigger than our wrong turns. God is bigger when you ignored him saying, take that exit. And you just kept on going. God is bigger than saying, Go north and you go south. Isn't he? Some of you sound like you've experienced that. I know I have. So rerouting. Psalm 37, 23 and 24. Just a few scriptures before we get into our main story. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. For some of you, that should really be a revelation today because some of you don't know how much God loves you. You don't realize he's actually concerned about every single detail of your life. Things that you think he just doesn't really know about or doesn't really care about or aren't really important to him. Listen, if it's you, it's important. He loves you. He delights in every detail of your life, and he orders or directs our steps. If I live godly, what does that mean? If I live to please God, if I live to please God and follow him, he's going to direct my steps. I don't have to live guessing, wondering, doubting where I should go, what I should do, what direction, Lord. He'll lead you. Question is, do you go where he tells you? Yeah, 2416. Uh, Proverbs 24, 16. Oh, man, I love this. This is something that has been such a blessing to my life because if you're like me, you've screwed up a couple times or a few or a dozen. Or <laughs> the godly may. Come on, uh, so come on. Somebody come up here and show me what it looks like to trip. Come on, Darius. Just help me out. What does it mean to trip? Trip. 
That, we don't trip with style, young man. Thank you. Oh, oh Jesus, now get up, okay. We have a dramatized sermon today. <laughs> oh, Lord. We're all one big family right in here. We're all different colors and we love each other, right? Can I say a little racial joke? <laughs> Darius, you trip with style. <laughs> He just really tripped. Is that okay? You guys all right? <laughs> Come on, y'all. We're a family. Jeez. White men can't jump, right? Huh? And the Hispanics are like, I don't get it. I don't have any idea what y'all are laughing at. Okay? Que están hablando, right? What is going on in here? Sorry for that three-minute rabbit trail. But the godly may trip seven times. What does seven represent? Everything, completion. This means every time, right? I mean, as much as you could. <laughs> but they will get up again. And if you read... Um, if you read um, some translations of this says the godly will trip seven times, but seven times they'll get up again. Which, which means if I'm godly, if I'm after God, every time I trip, every single time, I'll get up. Yes? It doesn't matter how many times you trip. Now, don't try to. Like we're about to read about this prophet who wasn't a very good prophet. Y'all all know what we're about to talk about, don't you? Jonah was a prophet. Hoo, hoo, he never really got it. Sad a doodly do veggie tales if you don't have kids you don't know okay he did not get the point yeah if you walk in relationship with God and you cling to his word like we've been learning and you listen to his voice sometimes we'll still misstep because we're human Sometimes we'll still make a mistake. You might even do it on purpose. Whew. The good news is if your heart's desire is to do God's will, his grace is bigger than that. Amen. And he has the power to reroute you way better than Siri. Okay? He has the power to get us back on course, and amazingly, to get us still to our final destination of his will, even though we screwed it up. There's one who hasn't sinned. No, not one. We've all gotten off track, right? This brings us to our main story today. Now listen, uh, you can turn to Jonah in your Bible or... Follow the summary on the screen. The whole book of Jonah only takes about 15 or 20 minutes to read, okay? It's four chapters. But what I did was kind of sew together a summary of the whole book. So that's what we're going to read. This is Jonah 1, 2, 3, and 4 summarized, the main point. So probably let's, uh, let's follow along on the screen, and I want you to say this. A message from the Lord. If you've never seen Jonah by Veggie Tales, you should watch it. It's anointed. It really is, Okay. Y'all ready? The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Specific instructions, right? Get up and go to where to go to, okay? And then what to do? Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Specific instruction. Get up, go here, and do this, right? Specific Specific things about God's will for Jonah, okay? But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. I don't know how well he knew the Lord. Because <laughs> last time I checked and last time I tried it, I could not get away from him. You cannot get away from him. He's everywhere all the time, okay? We read a few weeks ago, even in hell, even if I make my bed in hell, there he is. He's there. You can't get away. But where did Jonah go? God gave him this direction, and he went opposite. Anybody ever done that? 
the Lord said this, and you said, "Uh -uh. (laughs) uh-uh, I don't like that. Jonah, Jonah's issue here, because we all have issues, for the reasons we don't do the will of the Lord sometime. How fitting. Jonah's issue was prejudice. He didn't like the Ninevites. They were enemies of his people. Okay? I don't know what your excuse is that you're not doing the will of the Lord, but it doesn't count. Okay? Come on, tell your neighbor. Excuses don't count. Las excusas, los pretextos, no cuentan. Okay? We all have a good excuse not to go where the Lord says to go, not to do what the Lord says to do, not to say what the Lord says to say, not to change the things the Lord tells us to change. We all have excuses, but they really don't count. As you'll see as we read the rest of the story, it didn't matter. What God said was what God wanted. Um, He bought a ticket. So... And, and, and went on board, sorry, he went down to the port of Joppa, we're in, um, still in verse 3, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. Look at a map. It's totally in the opposite direction, way far away from Nineveh, okay, for Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. And then let me summarize what, what happened. All the rest of the sailors were like, what is wrong? What's going on? Who caused this? Whose fault is this? And Jonah's like, it's me. <laughs> I serve God, and I disobeyed him. How can we get the storm to stop? Throw me out of the ship. <laughs> Without floaties, right? Into the raging sea. We're moving to chapter 2, verse 15. The sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. It wasn't like a thunderstorm that, like, winds down. You know, it's like, oh, the thunder's getting softer, and the clouds... No, no, it was like... Gone. Because this was a supernatural thing. Okay? The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power and offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. I find it amazing that God used Jonah anyway. (laughs) In the midst of his disobedience, he showed these people that didn't know God who God was. Yikes. I'd rather serve God and, and, and be on good terms rather than him use me anyway in spite of me. Right? Okay? So, verse 17, I want you to say, God is good. Because most of us read about the whale and we're like, ooh, that is terrible. No, 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 no. The whale was good. The whale was God's goodness. You said it says it's a great fish. It doesn't say whale. They didn't classify mammals from fish back then. It was a whale or a really big fish. Who knows? Okay. So it says, verse um, 17, it says, The Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. Isn't that nice of him? He arranged it. He told Willie, Willie, I need you to swallow Jonah, and then you're going to free Jonah, okay? He arranged it, okay? Where do y'all think Pinocchio got his uh, story from? All right. Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. And even in the worst possible situation, we see Jesus. There's Jesus. Because all this is is a prophetic picture that Jesus would come and be in the grave for three days and then come out okay all right so Jonah couldn't get away from being a prophet (laughs) I mean he he was disobeying the Lord and he still couldn't get away God was using his life and and then and then and then chapter three says then Jonah prayed then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish and he said I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. And then in verse 10, we move forward to verse 10. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach. He didn't spit him out in the water. He spit him out on the beach. Right back to square one. I don't know if it was the same beach he had set sail from to go to Tarshish, but I think it might have been, because what we see happen next 
is God says, here we are again, Mr. Jonah. Right? He spit him out. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. This is chapter 4. Verse 1, the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up. And go to the great city of Nineveh. And deliver the message I've given you. This time Jonah obeyed. (laughs) The Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large it took three days to see it all. And remember, not only that, a big, big, big city that were his enemies, okay? When God saw what they had done, because he went and he told them, God's judgment is coming on the city, right? They repented, okay? They repented. They said, let's stop doing what we're doing, right? In the words of VeggieTales, stop fish slapping, okay? They were violent people, y'all. They were very violent, okay? Okay? It was a very violent city. There was a lot going on, and they repented. And it says God saw that, and they had put a stop to their evil ways, and he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. Do you Listen, we are, Jonah was a prophet. Ooh, ooh, no, and we are the church. We are the church. We are the prophetic voice of God to the world. We can get God to change his mind about the destruction that's inevitable upon our nation because of us turning our backs against him. Do you believe that? All right. God didn't carry out the plan because of their repentance. But that's not even what the message is about today. So let's move on with that. All right. God's sovereign power and his amazing grace are greater. I'm going to say greater than we can even grasp. God is so good and so powerful that he can cause us to fulfill his will no matter how far we get off track. The question is, do you prefer a boat ride or the whale's belly? It's up to you. I, I don't know how far when God told Jonah go to Nineveh, but he probably just had to take a boat ride, or maybe it was by, by, by land, maybe it was just a walk. He still got to Nineveh, y'all. <laughs> but it was via a storm, a whale, and being thrown up. <laughs> We have two options in the will of God. First, before I say this, I want you, you've got to get this. God will not obligate you. He will not make you do his will. He wants to put his will in your heart so that your heart wants to do his will. This is the wonderful thing about the new covenant. The Holy Spirit comes on the inside of us, and he writes his laws in our heart and in our mind. He actually makes us want to do, the desire to do the will of God, and then the power to do it. But we can ignore, disobey, and disregard God. So there's the hard way, and there's the easy way, right? There's the boat ride or the walk. Or there's the storm in the, be- in the whale's belly. It really is up to us. The most amazing thing is God can still get you where he's got you going. Five things really quick from this story. Number one, and this is in your outline. Sometimes we ignore the voice of the Lord. And sometimes we make moves in the wrong direction. Sometimes we ignore the voice of the Lord. Sometimes we make moves in the wrong direction. Maybe the Lord has told you about something in your life. And he says, I want you to change this. I want you to get rid of this. I want you to go here. I want you to talk to that person. I want you to 
break this relationship. I want you to get into this relationship. I want you to, and you've just, maybe you've either, that's not the Lord, even though you know it is. Some of us know when we're ignoring the Lord. Come on, this is real today, y'all. You know when you're ignoring him. You can't play it off. God knows us. Not only sometimes do we ignore him, but sometimes we just, he's showing us this way and we, we go this way. The Lord says, in that relationship, it's bad for you and you just keep right on going in it. The Lord says, stop looking at that and you just keep on looking. The Lord says, stop listening to that. Stop gossiping. Stop hanging out there. And you just keep on going. Either ignore or even intentionally just disobey. Jonah did that. And Jonah was a prophet. Okay? Number two, God's kindness allows us to go through storms. In order to get our attention. Listen to this one. And he continues to care for us. Even as we walk through those storms. The whale. The big fish. Was God's taking care of Jonah. He arranged for that great fish to swallow Jonah. Not to hurt him. But to protect him. He would have drowned. He would have drowned. Well, how did he not drown inside of a whale? I don't know. It was supernatural, okay? Somehow, it must have been a pretty big whale. God took care of him. It was certain, listen, it was certain death for him. It was certain death. Thrown into the raging sea, dead, drowned. And so many times we've got ourselves into a situation that it really truly would be certain death if it weren't for the goodness of God taking care of us, surrounding us, keeping us safe. How many times have I walked through a storm that I've brought upon myself? And I'm not saying all storms come because you bring it upon yourself. That's another whole message. That's another whole concept. But many times the junk we go through is because we brought it on ourselves. Okay? How many times have you been going through something terrible because of something you did or because you ignored or disobeyed the Lord and he took care of you anyway? He's good. He's good when we're not good. He's faithful when we're unfaithful. He can't be unfaithful because that's who he is. The whale is God's goodness. Number three, God's desire for us is to cry out to him and return our hearts to him. There in the belly of that whale, it says Jonah prayed. And he had a change of heart. Read the whole book. He decided, I'm going to (laughs) obey. If the Lord get me out of this one, I'm going to go by to church, right? No. If (laughs) If the Lord gets me out of this, that's the end of my rebellion and my stinking attitude. I'm going to obey. I'm going to say yes to what he says, right? And this is called repentance. God wants us to come to the place of repentance Not to just feel bad about what we've done, about ignoring him, about disobeying him. No, for us to turn our heart back to him and say, no longer will I go that way. I'm going to go your way. Repentance. Y'all, repentance is a good thing, not a bad thing. That's not an ugly word. It's a good word. We look at the word repentance so many times and we think that immediately brings negative connotation. Repentance is one of the most positive words in the Bible. Because repentance is this opportunity of I was going the wrong way into certain death and God's taking care of me anyway. And he said, come on, stop, go the other direction. And I do. Repentance. God wants us to cry out and repent and return our heart to him. Number four, God's tool to reroute us. Whatever that tool may be in your life. For Jonah, it was a storm and a whale. 
But whatever tool God uses, whatever storm, whatever situation, whatever whatever he uses to reroute you, to get you back on track, whatever it is, it'll always do one thing. It'll bring us back to the point of obedience. Always. It's not plan B, plan C, plan Z. (laughs) It was always plan A, and he's going to get you right back on plan A. Okay? It'll never be, well, since you decided to disobey, I guess I'll give you another way. No. He will use whatever in his great love for you to get you back to the point of repentance and then obedience where you say yes to him. And number five, when we obey God, he reroutes or redirects our path. And by his power, he causes us to fulfill his will, which is, again, it's good. And as you start to do it, you realize, hey, this is pleasing, right? Not easy, not always fun, but pleasing. And the more and more and more we do the will of God, we realize this is perfect. It's good. It's pleasing. It's perfect. RJ, you can come back and you guys can stand. Jesus. This is a very serious moment for some of you in here today. I know it. As I was getting ready for this message, I sensed it in my spirit and my heart that there are people here today, and you know that you are off track. You know. You're going in the wrong direction. Maybe you've ignored the voice of the Lord calling you. Maybe you have even intentionally gone against what he's told you, showed you, what you've seen in his word. And what he wants is to have your heart again. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three, three days and three nights, Jesus went to the cross and then was in the grave. So we could be set free from our disobedience to God's will. And today, the wonderful I'm just going to let him do that right now. I'm not going to rush this. Just shut your eyes for a minute. The Holy Spirit is here and conviction is strong. Some of you are under heavy conviction right now. You know this word is for you. And God is so good that he's convicting you. He's putting his finger right there on your heart. He's saying, I love you so much. I'm calling you to repent. Come on, don't ignore him. Don't harden your heart towards him today. Jesus. Precious Jesus. You love us so much. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand today. I'm just going to ask you to come right on up. So that's, that's some of you. And you need to come to a place of repentance and getting your heart right with God again. If that's you, come on. Just come on up here to the altar. It's open for you today.
come and cry out to God. Come to that place like Jonah did and cry out. He, he, he is here to hear you today. He wants to give you his mercy today. I know it's a few more of you and you're contemplating, should I, should I wait? Should I wait until I feel more ready? No. If the Holy Spirit today is tugging at your heart, don't resist him. Don't resist him. You don't ever know when it might even be your last opportunity. Don't harden your heart. Don't resist him today. Come, give your heart to Jesus. If you've never given your heart to Jesus before, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or if you have, but you've gotten off track, you've backslidden, you're going in the opposite direction, your relationship with the Lord is not in order, today is your day to get back on the right track. Come and give your heart holy to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.